Alright, so today we're going to look at orifices, okay, namely hooded orifices. In a cooktop, you know, it could be any different configuration, but in, in a cooktop that has tubes like this, these tubes actually fit over hooded orifices, okay? The hooded orifices fit right into the ends of these tubes and then the gas goes up into here, it mixes, this is a mixer tube, and then it ignites here and then you get a flame. Okay. Just the orifice, the size of the orifice will depend on what type of gas is being used and you know how that flame is going to come out. Okay? And there's different settings also, but we're concentrating on the orifice. Okay? So these guys just fit right over this like this. Nice nifty like, okay. Now, this is what an orifice looks like. Okay. So it's just a little tiny little guy, okay? It's got a threaded fitting here. It's got a shank here, and it's got a hole in the end of it, okay? The size of that hole is, uh, is going to determine what type of fuel, you know, whether it's liquid propane, LP, or natural gas, NG or maybe CNG, okay? That's going to be determined, the size of that's going to be determined by the type of gas. If you look at this orifice here, there are numbers stamped on this, okay? And that's because the manufacturer has bored this hole to be a 055 size hole. When the orifice first came from the factory, because this the factory did not make this orifice, this was made somewhere else, okay? It started off as a blank, which had a hole in the center, much smaller than that, which was a number 90 hole, okay? So that would have made this a number 90 orifice, but it was actually bored out to have a 055 hole and be a different size. And we're going to see these sizes here in a second, okay? So, this was stamped by the factory 055, I mean by the, the, the cooktop manufacturer. This was stamped by the orifice manufacturer, okay? So, the number that is stamped on the side of that orifice, the first number, the one by the manufacturer of the orifice, corresponds to the drill size, the hole that was originally there, okay? So this one doesn't go all the way down to 90 because 90 is extremely small. This drill index, this is number drills, okay? Starting at 60 and going up to one. If you'll notice, the smaller the number, right? The smaller the number, the bigger the drill. So this one's got a big number, that one's got a small drill. Uh, propane orifices, you know, they're going to go 062, 066. They're going to be even smaller than this tiny little drill size right here. Okay? And by these numbers are decimal equivalents 040. That 055 orifice that we were just looking at, that's going to be a number 54 drill size. So that would make that a number 54 orifice. Or they might just have the decimal stamped on it 055. Okay, so if you're going to drill orifices yourself, you're going to chuck one of these little drill bits into a pinch vise. It's just a little, a, a little pinch chuck. I'm sorry, pinch chuck. It's just a little chuck. You put a drill in here. You do it by hand because the brass is very soft. You know, you could drill that sucker out by hand, no problem. You just got to make sure that the inside is completely round. And not distorted, and there's no, there's no, uh, you know, flash in the middle there. You need to clear that out because it's not going to have a clear flow. Okay. Now there's a little bit of confusion about the size of these orifices if you're not in the gas world. Okay. So we're going to show how this gets sized. If you look at this orifice here, this orifice. Let me open this up. This orifice is a is a 1 8 27, you know, 1 8 27 orifice. So that means that this fits onto a 1 8 pipe, gas pipe, and there's 27 threads per inch on the inside there. The confusion is if you measure this, okay, it ends up being more like 3 8 of an inch on the inside diameter. Where'd the 1 8 come from? I'm not exactly sure how that came from, but that's what they call a 1 8 inch orifice, okay? And that's a very standard size, 
I don't think you're going to really see any orifices that are any size other than that. An eighth inch, 27 threads per inch, okay? So, that corresponds to, oh, and then there is another way to check this. You can use a gauge it, okay? This is probably the easiest way to do it if you don't have calipers. And you can just put this over, it'll fit over the 3 eighths fitting there, okay? Because it's too big for the 5 16 and it's too small for the 7 16 So, you know that that sucker is 3 eighths in the middle there, 3 eighths of an inch, even though that's called a 1 eighth orifice, 1 eighth 27, okay? The other part of that equation is, and let me move this up here, the other part of that is the actual pipe, now this is an old orifice here, is the pipe that gets fitted into this hole, okay? So, the way I determine how to size up this orifice is to use from a from a tap and die set, okay, I use a thread gauge. And it's going to be right in here. I'm going to pull it right out. So, we got one second here. I use a thread gauge, okay? This one here is an SAE thread gauge. That means it's standard American threads. There's also metric thread gauges, but we're looking at SAE. This is good old US of A here. This is a, 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 a unit that's made for North American consumption, okay? So inside of here are gauges. And each of these gauges has a number, and that's gonna tell me the threads per inch. So I'm gonna just see here for grids. And let me just pull it over here, get a little bit closer, maybe. Okay, a little bit closer. I'm gonna see if this gauge is going to fit onto these threads. So I'm just gonna measure it by the profile. And it looks like it's a little bit awkward. I can rock that thing, okay? So I'm gonna go up to the next size, which is a 27. Okay, so let me clear all the other ones away from it. 27, okay? And that fits the profile of that thread perfectly. So now I know that I have inside this orifice a 1 8 27 thread per inch orifice. The shoulder on these things is going to vary, but that's not really a critical dimension because they're going to fit inside the tube gas is still going to come out. The critical dimensions are the threads, the size, 1 8, right, 27, and the hole size, which is what the orifice is called. Okay, so let's say that this is a, uh, you know, a 0 5 9 orifice or whatever it is, okay, that sometimes they'll be called by numbers, sometimes they'll be called by their drill equivalents, okay. That's Hole size is really critical to the gas mixture that's going to get mixed into tubes. So, basically, let's get it back over here again. Okay, that is how you size up an orifice. Now, there's a couple of other adjustments that need to be made on these cook tops. Different manufacturers differ differ in the way they do that. With my Jet Air here, you know. I have to change out the orifices to smaller jets if I'm going to convert over to propane. You know, these, these, these holes are too big for propane use. The holes are a lot smaller than that for propane use. You know, obviously, I'm going to you know, put it back in place. I'm going to put some tape over there, you know, tape it all up and get it flowing, get it mixed up. Now, the other mixtures, you know, like with these guys here, sometimes you got to change the shutters out to get the shape of the flame right. Uh, sometimes you gotta adjust the gas valves that turn on the cooktop. You put a little screwdriver in there. You have to tweak them down and up. You know once you have the propane in there because it's gonna flow and burn a little bit differently than gas will. So you know you gotta do some, some uh, different measurements. But this is really the only hardware that needs to be changed. Even the regulator on these cooktops here is a universal regulator. It can be used with gas or natural 
with natural gas or liquid cocaine, right? NAT or LG. And the way that is, is there's a, there's a valve inside the regulator that can be converted for use for propane or natural gas. And that's a whole different subject. And, you know, I do, I have done a demonstration video on that, on how that's done. It's a real simple switch. You take a piece off, you flip over this little piece, and then you screw the, the top of it back in, and then it'll regulate down. But, uh, you know, that's for that side of it. I'm just worried about the size and fitment of the orifices, okay? So that's it. That's as simple as that, you know? Real simple to figure out what size these orifices are. And these are hooded orifices. You know, you don't usually find these out there unless you're looking at an older cooktop that's modular like this. If you have a sealed murder system, you're likely not gonna have those types of orifices, you know? But there are a number of older cooktops that have orifices that are just like these. People are taking these now. Maybe they're switching out, you know, maybe they're moving out to the country. They want to take their cooktop with them. You know, use propane. Well, that's what you got to do. That's the one piece of hardware that has to be changed on these guys are the jets. And there's really no shortcuts for that aside from getting different jets if you're going to go from natural gas to propane because the propane jets are have smaller holes in them. And you can't, you know, can't drill a smaller hole if the hole's too big. And that's the end of the video. Thanks for watching.